on the 21st day of October, Halloween gave to me 21 babies killing, 20 horse heads snorting, 19 D's renting, 18 Franks perving, 17 angels stripping, 16 demons jazzercising, 15 runes on parchment, 14 Joseph's whispering, 13 seniors bleeding, 12 creepy masks, 11 dancing demons, 10 Catholic monsters, 9 priests a miracling, 8 Jerry's vamping, 7 Jody's oinking, 6 body swapping, 5 reeds a wolfing, 4 drunken uncles, 3 werewolf colonies, 2 spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the 21st of 31 days of Halloween. Uh, this time, I have another listener request in the chamber for you. And uh, this one, I enjoyed uh, even more than I did Horsehead. So let's dive in. The movie on our plate today is a film entitled Prevenge. And this is written and directed by Alice Lowe, who I probably know best as the girlfriend in uh, Sightseers, that Ben Wheatley movie. But uh, yeah, she she both uh, wrote it here, directed it here, and it's a really fun story about a woman who is pregnant and she believes that the baby that she carries is forcing her to murder. And so the film is uh, sort of an examination, if you will, of sort of that horror that a woman must experience. And I'm, I'm going to say a lot of things in the course of this that are my best guesses based on what the film presents, because I am not a woman, um, despite uh, some rumors to the contrary. And I, I do not have children of my own, so I haven't been with someone who went through the experience of, of childbirth and pregnancy. So, you know, I, I'm speaking from not a place of expertise, let's say. But in the film, there is definitely the implication, and Alice Lowe, uh, her character, talks about this uh, quite a bit. Her character is named Ruth. And Ruth talks a lot about how, you know, that basically there is this thing inside her that is just taking over her body. You know, it, it she does doesn't control her own thoughts and emotions and and even some of her body. There's a great character who's sort of a midwife, um, or that's how she's listed in the credits. And the midwife is, um, you know, it seems to be sort of a medically appointed kind of person that you go to who uh, helps you along with the pregnancy, does all the sonograms and stuff. I think the U.S. equivalent would just be your, uh, your OBGYN. And... The, the midwife is telling her, like, oh, yeah, it, your body is just no longer yours. You're totally out of control. In fact, did you know that if you hear a high-pitched sound, you are likely just to jet milk out of your breasts? And so uh, all of this to say that, you know, Ruth is having a hard time dealing with this, this strange invader in her body that is causing all kinds of, of physical and mental changes. And we hear the voice of the baby... Uh, often telling her like, "Hey, you need to kill. You need to murder," and and so she does. Uh, the very first scene of the movie is her killing this guy uh, who runs a pet store, and it's clear as the movie goes along that there is a little more method to the madness than her just randomly killing people. But it doesn't like it doesn't fully reveal itself till the end, and I'm not. I'm not going to give that away because I think you ought to see Prevenge if you haven't seen it, uh, which, by the way, available on Shutter. And um, so I'm going to keep some of the secrets and, and dance around uh, some of the story. But yeah, there's there's definitely the the idea that this isn't just a random act. And coupled with all of this is the fact that her husband has recently died. And we don't know exactly, as the, the movie begins, the circumstances of that, other than uh, this guy that she was with. Uh, and I don't think they were married, actually. I, I, I think they might have just been dating, now that I think about it. At any rate. 
Um, he dies when she uh, is, is, is doesn't even know she's pregnant yet. And so Ruth is sort of struggling to... At times, it seems like she's looking for... Uh, you know, a good man in her life and just can't find one. But other times it seems like there is a larger purpose to her rampage. As all of this is going on, uh, worth it to say that this is a very funny movie and it's it's a very black comedy. But, you know, it, it's sort of Ruth's misadventures with being a serial killer. And sometimes she's really good at it. Sometimes she's not. Uh, <laughs> but there's a great scene with the uh, uh, an actress named Kate Dickey who, if you are me, you will know as the mother in The Witch, or The Vavitch. And there's a great scene where uh, she go- Ruth goes for a job interview, and Ella is uh, the, the woman interviewing her at a law firm. And there's this whole song and dance about how, like, well... I don't know that we want to hire someone who is pregnant. Not That's not me, of course. I'm not the one saying that. I'm just saying there are people who are less enlightened that might think, well, as soon as you get started, you're going to have to go on maternity leave. And so a lot of the movie is sort of highlighting the pitfalls of pregnancy, the, the stuff about pregnancy that isn't just glowing skin and smiles and baby showers. It's, you know, your body changes in ways that you don't necessarily like um you are seen a certain way like there there's one segment where she's making out with a guy and he thinks that she's just overweight and he's into that but then he realizes that she's pregnant and he freaks out about it and so there's that body image thing of like well if you're pregnant you're no longer you know sexually desirable to some degree uh, the problems of, of being in the workforce and being seen as a liability because you're having a baby and, and can't devote your full life to the company at that point. And there's a lot of really interesting sort of internal conversations that the movie is having about how pregnancy affects just every aspect of your life. It's not just, oh, I'm doing everything I would normally do and by the way, I'm having a baby. It's, I'm having a baby, and so everything that I do is now uh, altered or, sh- or changed, whether it's my own perception of myself or the way that others perceive me and all of that. And and like I said, it's very funny along the way. There's It's a very dry kind of British comedy, so it's not uh, a broad comedy by any stretch. But if you liked Sightseers, for example, and thought that that was a black comedy that worked for you, then I think you're going to enjoy Prevenge. Uh, Prevenge, I suppose. And yeah, I, th- I think it's great. There's a a moment where she kills a guy that she kind of likes, uh, or, or at least doesn't hate. And, you know, the baby is like, oh yeah, she this guy would have, he, w- he would have dropped a dime on you because you had to kill this other guy in front of him. And by the way, his name was Josh, and you just can't trust a Josh. And... Ruth kind of agrees with her baby, like, oh, yeah, you're right. You you just can't trust a Josh. And there's stuff like that all through the movie that's very funny. It's peppered with these very subtle jokes. But, you know, there's also some ridiculous scenarios of her getting caught in a pet door as she's trying to flee a crime scene and that kind of thing. It's just a really good, dark comedy. And it actually has something to say. And, and, and like I said, I don't want to give away sort of the secrets of the ending. But it's uh, it, it has a, a statement about personal responsibility and accountability that I really like. Um, also, there's a terrific recurring bit with a movie. I think it's called Crimes of 